I'm Kat. I'm Haley. <laughs> and this is Night Classy, the podcast where two teachers unwind, sip wine, and we each teach a lesson we can't teach at school. What are scandalous. we drinking? I'm so <laughs> scandalous. <laughs> We're drinking wine. And more specifically, <laughs> it's a bold Cabernet Sauvignon from the Nighthawk Black Box. It's rich, it's bold, it's smooth. It's mm. the Boda Box. Yeah. Not a sponsor, but <laughs> they, they <laughs> should be by now. Right. We definitely, they should do yeah. a reward system because yeah. I need a punch card for Boda Box. We need several punch cards for Boda Box. <laughs> <They'd be full. laughs> yeah. They can't even send us punch cards quick enough. But yeah, that's what we're drinking. Yeah. We are chugging. We are chugging. <laughs> because you know why, Haley? Because it's been a week. It has been a week. And when this comes out, the election will have happened. That makes my stomach churn. It makes me want to throw up. I wish my future self could talk to myself right now and say that it's okay. But I, I that's not possible. Yeah, it's, it's not We possible. don't have the technology. <laughs> not, not yet anyway. <laughs> not that we know of yeah. anyway. Well, <laughs> maybe if Biden gets elected, he'll give us that technology. Give us the time travel. <laughs> I need I need a president who's going to fix the parking lots mm-hmm. that are poorly designed mm-hmm. and give me time travel. That's those are I'm a single issue voter for time travel. <laughs> Every time I'm going to vote time travel. <laughs> Nothing else matters. Vote for the policies, not the man. And time travel is the most important thing. What can I say? Yes, and then once you get time travel, you can go back and fix all the things. Oh my god, Did why we just didn't make I a movie? think of that? I just wanted to tell my future self travel. travel. Okay, yeah, I just wanted time travel. <laughs> well, yeah. Hopefully, if as we're listening to this now, everything, everything is, is okay. okay. Yeah, everything is right in the world. Everything's not on fire, and if it is, we'll get through it. Be strong, everybody. Forget about it for just a second. And should we like make two edits? Like, like, when, like when Michael was waiting for Holly to like be engaged or not, and he made two different videos of himself, like either but, celebrating or telling him it's gonna be okay. Both of the edits are just us screaming into the microphone. <laughs> screaming and there's tears rolling down our face and the happy one and the like a terrified one looks the same. <laughs> Come to November 3rd. Kanye West is president of the United States. <laughs> the sad part is that would be an improvement. I know. <laughs> I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> I'm not vomiting. You're vomiting. <laughs> oh Lord. So the election is... When this comes out and um, <laughs> Halloween like is right before it comes out. And I'm excited for Halloween. That it's makes scary. my stomach All feel around. good. Yeah, everything's scary. <laughs> it's appropriate. <laughs> I said I wanted every day in October to be Halloween, but this is not what I meant. Okay, but the election's in November. Right, but we're preparing for it. Well, election day is in November. Yeah. The election mm. proceeds. Wait, the election is happening currently. People are voting. Well, not as you're hearing this. No, it is all done. And you made your Ooh. bed. Now we got to lie in it. Time whatever, travel. Whatever it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but Halloween is tomorrow. And is. we've already discussed our plans. We we're have gonna, a name for it. We're going to Ouija board. We do have a name. We, have we said the name on the... We've said the name before. I think we have. Yeah. But officially... What we're doing is called Night Creepy. Night Creepy. <laughs> and we're going to do our Ouija board. And um, we have a new special friend. We have a new special friend. Her name is not Plain Jane, like Alex so rudely called her earlier today. Such a wet blanket. I, I literally yelled it. <laughs> I heard it from upstairs. <laughs> her name is Jane Doe, and um, she's my autopsy doll. She's really cool. I- I um, wonder what her story is since she's an autopsy doll. You know, Jane Doe. Yeah, she's what, unidentified. That's just the name. Yeah. What, yeah. what happened? I I, th- I like to think. Um, I think I like to think they pulled her out of a river and definitely she has she some abrasions. Very pale. Well, she pulled was pulled out of the river. <laughs> no, but that's not how they do autopsy. Like they cut you open to see I, how you die. Not like that. She's like on her neck and an X on her chest, on her and neck on her and shoulder. her back, her pussy and her crack. No, I haven't left it out the blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, like I have. She is, in fact, plain Jane. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> but Night Classy has had a good week. We uh, 
we want something kind oh, of. oh my gosh i like i was like <laughs> wait what what oh yeah right, right right we we did we won we're best of we, memphis we won second, second place <laughs> <laughs> i like to say we won second place i think that's a win Especially because the person who beat us is verified on Twitter with like hundreds of thousands of followers. Right. So. And I don't say this to get us down. And Tommy said this as well, but we were probably blown out of the water. Like they have yeah. so many listeners and followers. It probably was not even close. No. But what's so cool is that we were second. Yeah. So like this is like <laughs> minor league sports against major yeah. league sports. <laughs> It's and like, we're the White Sox and <laughs> we played the insane coho lips and got blown out of the water, but <laughs> everything but was on second. fire. Yeah. But we walked out second place, best of Memphis. Yeah. And we're not even a year old. I know. And when voting started, we had like 20 episodes. Maybe if that. Yeah. I don't even think that. I think we had like 15. So we're doing well. Thank you so much, everyone who voted. We were excited to get second place. Oh, um, yeah. Absolutely. Losing is cool sometimes. It's not losing. <laughs> yeah, and we still got the name in the newspaper. Yeah. Our name is in the... Wasn't it so cool to hold the physical newspaper and flip to your podcast? It was. Thank you for that, because I literally didn't even know that <laughs> they still printed like, they physical still print? newspaper. What is paper? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool. So thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting. Thank yeah. you for voting. We greatly appreciate it. Do you have anything else? I'm trying to think and use my brain. I don't think I do. Um, I have one note on here about night milk, but I don't know if we need to talk about that. <laughs> I think we should touch on it. <laughs> okay. Well, nobody knows about it except for our Patreon that's supporters. That's true. Okay. We came up with something called night milk <laughs> and, and it was a hypothetical and then we actually drank it. And something I'm about happened. To throw up thinking about night milk, I'm coughing <laughs> so hard. <laughs> so if you want to know about night milk, which you probably do, we did make it. And yeah, but I said that. Oh, you're not listening. You're busy dying. I was coughing. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes when I get cough, uh, when I cough, I get carried away. Yeah. So if you like night classy and you like milk, or you don't or like you milk, hate milk like us, <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, and you want to find out what the hell we're talking about, you can easily just uh, donate at minimum $1, one per dollar per month. We're, we're cheap. <laughs> we, we're cheap. We know our worth and it's a dollar. Yeah. Money talks <laughs> and it does not have to talk that loud. <laughs> um, this last episode on Patreon was so, so fun. It was so fun. And we made up a new drink recipe and it's called night milk. And I don't know, did we share the recipe? I think we made up the recipe as we, uh, yeah, we, as like, we if, went on when we were actually trying to make it. The idea was a pink white Russian, but then mm -hmm. we couldn't put strawberry syrup with Bailey's because Alec told us that'd be gross. So we mixed some other things. Don't try to put this on me <laughs> that it was gross. <laughs> we mixed um, rum, like strawberry syrup like that you'd put on an ice cream sundae, mm -hmm. coconut milk, and half and half. And it was yep. bad. It was not good. It tasted like just rum with well, like maybe a hint of strawberry. That was my fault. I, I went heavy on the rum. I'm not mad. But I liked mine. I I, I liked that it tasted like <laughs> rum. I don't know what that says about me, but I thought it was fine. Haley uh, put it in a blender and made it. two gallons of it and then threw it away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At least all I was wasting was your precious ice. And not the rum. Ice is precious. We don't have an ice maker right now. And I went, oh my God, uh, don't even get me started on that ice because I had to go on like a uh, adventure like I was in The Hobbit all around Memphis to get that ice. Nowhere had ice. I right. opened up the ice chest at Kroger and it was full of groceries that people had just like thrown into the like, ice chest. Uh, I don't need this. Yeah. It was empty of ice. And full of like rejected bags of like potato chips and bread. I get that. That's when you're like, I feel bad enough to put this back that I feel like I need to hide my shame, but not good enough about putting groceries back that I am going to go to someone. Did you just someone. say you get it? You would do that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I would do it. You can understand something and not do it yourself. I can't understand because the self-checkout was right there. If you didn't want to buy it, leave it at the self-checkout. Okay. That's fair. Don't hide it in the <laughs> ice thing okay, you're that's just, supposed to have ice. I think you're, and you're before, anger. Before anyone tweets at us and tells me that maybe the ice was in the freezer section and not in the big ice thing in the front of the store, I asked an employee where the ice was because I couldn't find it in the freezer section. And mm -hmm. he directed me mm -hmm. 
to the ice thing in the front of the store and I hear you. I've hear never you. been so angry. I've I, I was ready to be a Karen. You're just you're age act, me you sound 20 like 20 years and give me a haircut. I'm you're, ready. I hate to break it to you. Your <laughs> anger is misdirected at the people who put their groceries in the non ice ice thing. They wouldn't oh, have no. put them in there. My anger is fully directed at Kroger. You just and I was ready everyone. to email corporate because <laughs> what kind of grocery store has no ice? Anyway, Alex telling us to hurry the fuck up. So I know, uh, 15 minutes of just uh, us blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Okay, so we breathalyzed. We sure did. And okay. Do you want to go first? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. taking the reins. Go. <laughs> I blew a point one three three. What about you? I blew a point one five three because I'm a drunk bitch. <laughs> Yes. We're about to match here real soon because like I said, it's been a scary roller coaster week for me. So it's been quite a time. Okay, let's get right into it. I'm so ready for this topic. Do it then. Oh, I'm going to do it. (laughs) So Haley, during the Victorian era, which was from 1837 to 1901, people loved hair. They loved it. Yes, they did. They're okay. Do you know yes. what I'm about to talk about? Are you going to talk about how they would make art out of hair? Yes. Yes. There was this. Okay. Where I grew up, there's this house. Promont is what it's called. And we went and visited it when, you know, all the time, like every year in school. And they had so much hair sculptures. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm genuinely so jealous. You got to see this in real life. Cause I had never heard of this until this week. Oh, it's dope as fuck. It's dope as fuck. Before we get into the art, Victorians would often save people's hair as a memento. Like much like when someone these days like gets their baby's first haircut, they mm-hmm. save some of their hair. It's not that weird when it's a baby's hair, but Victorians would save loved ones hair like all the time. It was kind of like a way to have that person close to you. Hair was often kept in lockets. Kids would paste like locks of their classmates hair into like scrapbooks, which makes sense because they didn't have really photos of their friends. So and it's not going to rot. Exactly. (laughs) It's not going to rot. You can just like, instead of a photo, you'd put something of theirs in the scrapbook, like their hair. People made jewelry out of hair, like really extravagant, beautiful jewelry weddings were often commemorated by weaving together the bride and groom's hair or the wife would give her groom a ring made out of her hair (laughs) well you know i better get to work because my shower drain (laughs) is ready to be making some art (laughs) you could make some money in the victorian era people bought hair we'll get to it so grown women would even give each other locks of their hair as a token of friendship do you want to lock on my so, hair? To get us in the mood for this episode, I have a gift for you. And I made one for Alec too, so that he wouldn't feel left out. What? <laughs> Here you what? go. What? <laughs> Is this your hair? That's my hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Go. This is your where did you cut it from? From the back of my head. <laughs> way too much and now I have a huge bald spot on the back of my head and I didn't even cut it low enough where you couldn't see it you can clearly see where I chopped up a giant chunk of my hair oh my god I can't believe and this is my ribbon literally the other day you came down so casually like hey is this your ribbon yeah can I borrow it okay Go in and, and go. This is a lot of hair. I didn't mean to cut that much, but I did, and there's no going back. Oh my god! And I fully expect you to keep it forever. Can I get an extension made out of it? I can't. I can't do this. I'm so glad you think this is funny. I did it, and I was like laughing the whole time I was making. It. I thought I was so funny and I was like what if I give this to her and she just like <laughs> looks scared what do I do <laughs> your hair is so healthy this feel, this is some smooth hair <laughs> oh my god I'm gonna hang it up on my wall <laughs> it's so cute you have to because this is a big sacrifice <laughs> make it my like own little rat tail <laughs> I can't, I'm so happy right now I can't, this That's is dedication I know <laughs> I was thinking about 
I, I didn't think about this until after it happened, but I was like, what am I going to do the next time I get a haircut? And they're like, why is there a big chunk cut off of your head? Was there, okay, uh, on a scale of one to 10, one being none, 10 being at least 24 hours, how much thought did you put into this action? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> okay. That's what I, I was doing my notes and I was like, this would be funny. And then just cut it off. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my, oh my god this is such a perfect like pretty piece of hair isn't it too. nice it's thick like it's, she yeah. gave us each thick strands I Alex you, is thicker than mine I so. gave you each a good piece well I didn't <laughs> choose who got what I actually think that yours is better or Alex yeah maybe Alex is better than yours I don't know. There this was, one is quite pretty. There was one bow that looked better than the other bow. I, Cause I tied, I tied it up in ribbon <laughs> <laughs> and I glued it with super glue around tape. So it's not going to fall apart. Um, it's yeah. very, <laughs> it's intact yeah, forever. It's we, we need to make these like uh, ornaments on our Christmas yeah. tree. <laughs> also, if you donate $50 or above on Patreon, I'll send you a lock of my hair. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I'll send you a lock of mine too and mine's got that curl in it so yeah, make it seven hair make it 75 <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's oh my, my that's my hair <laughs> i'm glad you think it's as funny as i thought i was when i, was I don't it. know how you didn't tell me before this and like that's why, i am so oh excited my God. For i wasn't this gonna episode. i wasn't gonna tell you or alec because it, like i wanted to surprise you but then i couldn't hold myself back i just thought i was so funny so i had to tell alec but also that's what i that's why i was showing in this sticky note read the read the top line of the sticky note <laughs> <laughs> make gifts yeah. uh, gifts in quotations yeah. and then lesson plan those were her two things <laughs> because I put sticky notes of like everything I have to do on my computer but I was at work and I didn't want to like write <laughs> make like, <laughs> like cut off a piece of hair and tie it in a bow I didn't want to put that on my computer while I was at work for everyone to see so I wrote make gifts yeah and, uh, you and Alec were talking about it before the lesson you're like look at my post-it card he he and then Alec was like hmm and I was he, like you didn't neither of you said anything to me I was like I guess it's about sex <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were thinking something like that. I didn't know what to Haley think. is not included in that part of our life. <laughs> let, let us let draw a clear show. line in yeah. between. Like, we blur many lines, but that is not one of them. <laughs> But yeah, I, I hope you I hope you like your gift. I love it. It reminds me of one time when I was in like uh, seventh or eighth grade. I was at my friend's like community pool and I was swimming backwards and I wasn't used to the pool and I smacked my head into the side of the like cement and I looked back and there's a chunk of my hair like I was bleeding and there's a chunk of my hair just like stuck to the cement. Oh my god. And it definitely was not as much hair as is in this strand. There's but. a lot. <laughs> what I meant to do is cut off about like the the amount of one of those and then split it into two but yeah. like when you're feeling it in the back of your head you can't really tell how much it is so i i really cut off a lot of hair may i see your bald spot um i don't know if you can see it but if you run your hand along the top of my head you'll like run into a bunch of short bits and it, okay i what i did was i was like oh it'll be less noticeable if i take a piece like that's like wide mm -hmm. and all the way around but i think yeah. there's the opposite was true <laughs> Yeah, I see that. <laughs> That's dedication. It spans like it's Does like, it really look that it's bad? like no, it. it doesn't look that bad. It, you're not gonna even be able to tell. Like it lays flat, but it's okay, like about. Alec, you don't have to take a picture. I don't really want to see it's it. It's like three <laughs> inches wide and like an inch and a half tall. <laughs> <laughs> Alex just said that's what she said. <laughs> okay. Wow. So uh, I feel you're welcome, this everybody. This confirms our I did this. friendship. It confirms our friendship and how much I care about being funny and making cheap jokes on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, Kat said I did something for the show today really impulsively, and I was like, "What did you do, Kat?" And she's like, "I can't tell you." And I started getting really concerned that she'd given herself some kind of tattoo. Oh, and so that's oh why she God. finally told me. Yeah. Did you did you know what the topic was and you thought it was a tattoo or Well, she just said I did something from the Victorian era to myself. And I was like, Cat, what happened? What did you do?" <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So, so I glued my hair together with super glue, but Victorians would have used egg whites or sugar water. We're just segueing right back. Yeah. Up. Right. Everything is normal. <laughs> yeah. No one is insane here. No one, no one did the weirdest thing they've ever done in their life. <laughs> I'm glad our podcast brings that out of you. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed and so proud at the same I'm time. I'm so proud. I have no embarrassment. This is just unbelievably good. <laughs> There's nothing bad. Like, I, I can't express yeah. how happy I am. Good. <laughs> and so I don't have to feel too bad because Queen Victoria gave her children jewelry made of her hair. And Napoleon had a wallet chain or a watch chain made out of his wife's hair. So I'm in I'm in the cool kids club. And Alec, will you please open up the Google Doc I sent oh, you? A watch yeah. chain? A watch chain. Okay. It's, I don't have a picture of it, unfortunately. But I'm gonna get I'm gonna make uh Tommy. I almost said Alec. I'm like, Alec, you said Alec pull this up. You broke Tommy's watch and you're like, here, Tommy, I have a replacement. It's just a, you braided your hair piece of your hair. My hair is more valuable than any piece of shit on Amazon will ever be. And I stand by that. Did his watch ever get fixed <laughs> yeah okay. well no not yet oh, it's, no. Gonna, it's gonna take two weeks but <laughs> it's so, sorted I didn't know that you had so much experience with this but this is what a hair wreath looks like <laughs> that's what you get when you grow up in a town called Milford Ohio <laughs> apparently <laughs> we don't have anything old in Washington State no one right. was there so um that's what it looks like it's pretty yeah so it's like in the middle is an oval picture of a family it's in like sepia is that how you say it sepia 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 and then all around it's like a flower like it almost looks like woodworking but it's not it's all made out of hair like very fine detail it's Um, beautiful yeah it's like wound around there are petals Mm. it's circular it's like dotted it's just insane detail with hair yeah all different colors too Mm -hmm. it's really nice and then that's a close-up wow isn't that one pretty i think that one's so pretty and i'm gonna these pictures will be on instagram if you want to see them yeah it's like white hair and there's browns in it it, it looks so wintry mm-hmm. and but yet warm and, at the and, same time. Yeah, and very floral. Yes, tons of flowers. I can't even imagine how long this this took, especially because when you're working with yarn, it's just a continuous stream of yarn. Mm-hmm. But hair, there's only so much right. before you have to. You gotta be, you gotta be Do careful it again. with the hair. And if you scroll down just a little bit more, there's some hair jewelry. So I just talked about how Queen Victoria made jewelry of her hair for her children. So it might have looked something like these. There's a, there's different types. So some of these, the hair is arranged under a piece of glass. So it might be plated or arranged under the glass. And others, the hair is braided into kind of like a chain that goes around your wrist. So it can either be like the ornament or it can be like the actual netting of the bracelet. Wow. There's all There's all kinds. Yeah do a lot of things with your hair Mm -hmm. the the thing I want to talk about most is hair wreaths so the first thing we looked at like that big floral wreath they're also called morning wreaths they are really cool they're intricately woven like Haley was saying giant wreaths some of them are really big and they're all made of human hair and the way they're made is people would wrap hair around wire And then arrange the wire in these like beautiful like floral arrangements, essentially make it look like flowers and lace. And these wreaths were displayed in people's homes. They were usually in glass shadow boxes against velvet or a silk background. That's exactly what it was Mm -hmm. at Promont, that house that we always went to. And I remember in third grade being disgusted it is a little disgusting but why like it's just human hair like we fawn over people who have pretty hair when it's on your head but as soon as it's off your head it's disgusting why i don't get that i don't know i don't really get it either but um that's just the way it is (laughs) can't tell (laughs) yet so uh, these mourning wreaths or hair wreaths were made to usually mourn or commemorate lost loved ones so as family members would die their hair would be incorporated into these like wreaths you would have a wreath for generations and as people died you'd keep adding to it and incorporating their hair and they kind of acted like family trees so behind the hair wreath like in the box like behind the velvet or whatever it was displayed against there'd usually be a piece of paper that was like a map 
of the hair wreath and it would be labeled like where certain family members hair was and like when they died when they were born instead of having family photos this is what you had of your loved ones and this is the way you remembered them (laughs) what if you're like looking at your family wreath and there was a ton of red hair from a certain period (laughs) and like you knew about um what is it called those boxes you would make for genetics pun it yeah, Punnett, Punnett Square. Square. Yeah, Punnett Squares. And like you were like, genetically, this is impossible, ma'am. Yeah, because like, in what? the Victorian era, they were talking about that. <laughs> we were like, ma'am, what They happened? didn't know what a germ was. <laughs> <laughs> Hypothetically, we go back with our um, time travel <laughs> and teach them all about it. Yeah. So that we can cure COVID <laughs> in 2020. <laughs> I'm voting for the pro time travel candidate so I can do <laughs> <Always>. this. <laughs> So these wreaths were usually horseshoe shaped and the person who most recently died, their hair was put in the middle at the place of honor and they opened upward, not downward, because opening upward symbolized that the deceased people were ascending to heaven and hair wreaths were not always for mourning. Oftentimes, like maybe if you needed to fill in your hair wreath a little bit, living people's hair would be added to the wreath or also sometimes groups of living people would make a hair wreath. So maybe like a school would collect hair from all the students and then make a wreath for that year. Like a yearbook. Like a yearbook. Yeah. They hair book. They didn't have very many photos and or like a church congregation, stuff like that. We should make a hair book. <laughs> I'm done with cutting off my hair. <laughs> well, yeah, you. you already contributed. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> like Haley was talking about, there's all kinds of hair art, not just wreaths. Hair was often made into brooches, especially as morning jewelry, because you could keep the deceased person close to your heart. It was also made into 3D sculptures and kept in a bell jar. So like this one right here, it's kind of blurry, but it's like this 3D, it kind of looks like a mini Christmas tree, but it's It does, it kind of looks like a mushroom. Yeah, but it would like sit on like the table in your parlor. You'd have this like 3D sculpture made out of hair. I think we need to bring this type of stuff back. I want one so bad. (laughs) <laughs> you can buy them. I, I was going to talk about it at the end, but you can buy these on like eBay and Etsy. And really? The cheaper ones are just like a couple hundred dollars. So sometimes hair was not even a memento of a loved one. Just hair jewelry from anyone was just like in style at the time. Was it extra valuable? Yeah. Cool. It was it was valuable. So in the early 1900s, you could even purchase hair jewelry from Sears. Sears yeah. was a thing. Sears was a thing wow. back then. Okay. You could, they, there were Sears catalogs that you could order from. You go to Sears, get your hair jewelry, get your picture taken, mm-hmm. get your hair done, get a new oven. <laughs> Yeah, you could just all buy. Accurate. You could buy all that stuff. It's all one hundred percent accurate. So, <laughs> hair art was it? While you could buy it commercially, it was usually made in the home, predominantly, almost actually, almost exclusively by upper middle class women. Of course, in the Victorian era, women weren't didn't really leave the home too much, or they weren't supposed to. They didn't uh, up or upper middle class women didn't have jobs, so they had a lot of time on their hands, and so. They created a lot of arts and crafts, and with that came hair art. The original Pinteresters. Yeah, they were. (laughs) And like much like Pinterest, like there were all these women's magazines that had like tips and techniques for making hair art in these magazines. And they they usually it was usually done at home. And so because this was like usually a home craft project and by women, the, their names don't really survive of the artists. Yeah, so, I was going to ask. They had to, what, sell them through like some man's business or? I don't know. They usually just weren't even sold because it was usually something you did for your family. And like, of course, there were some that were mass produced in factories, but like the majority was made at home for your family. And this was considered like a really honorable thing for women to do because you are tending to your family by honoring them and you're making a decoration for your home like beautifying the home was such a big deal back then and so that's just what they did and it was really pretty easy to have enough hair to do this because women at the time also kept their hair very long so 
when women died, you could cut their hair. You'd have plenty. You could cut off some of your own hair. You had plenty. And uh, people had what were called hair receivers or hair keepers in their home. These were porcelain containers where extra hair could be placed and used for crafting projects later. And so this is a picture of a Victorian hair keeper. And it's not it's nothing special. It's just like a white porcelain It looks jar. like a toilet seat. It does look like a toilet seat, but the that point catches all. a bedpan. <laughs> it does look like a bedpan, yeah, but it's not. Maybe it served two purposes. So, right. but I think <laughs> two I, for one. <laughs> I think the point here is that like hair was so important and used so often that like you had something a reciprocal specifically for hair in your home, and like whenever you'd like give your kids haircuts or anything like that, you just throw it in there and then do art projects. It was a fun time. Also, if you didn't have enough hair to create your wreath, you could use some horse hair. So horse hair is super thick, super thick. Yeah. And also different colors than human hair, because if you ever see white hair in one of these wreaths, it usually came from a horse because people in the Victorian era didn't usually live long enough for their hair to go white. Whoa, that just blew my mind. Yeah. Wait, when does your hair start to become white? Because I feel like it's young, but. And I knew usually, that people died I feel younger. Like usually in your eighties. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. it might go gray a little bit earlier, but pure white it takes a long time. There's like, certain people that that go white at like thirty. Yeah, of course. There are some people whose hair goes white, or maybe you just have super blonde hair, but usually it's from a horse. And like a lot of people supplemented these wreaths with horse hair because it was so long and thick. It was like really nice to work with. Yeah. You want that pure white, mm-hmm. that, yeah. Yeah. That, that good, good horse. Yeah. <laughs> and if you weren't fortunate enough to have a horse, you could also buy hair from catalogs or they even sold it at local stores for crafting projects. Wait, are we going to talk about what happened? Like how this went out of style yes okay good are you giving me the perfect segue i did i did (laughs) i just do did i do that god you're so good (laughs) so uh, i want to talk just for a second about their rise to popularity before we talk about the decline hair art has its roots (laughs) see what i did there (laughs) yep see it hear it feel it love it Ooh, <laughs> that's our new motto. <laughs> Put that on like a chunk of painted chunk of wood in our kitchen. <laughs> right. See it, feel it, love it, hear it. Wait, I don't know. I don't know what Ooh, I just see said. See it, hear it, feel it, love it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put that like on like above my bed. <laughs> Podcast. <Yeah. laughs> it's my, it's the words to wake up to every morning. Yeah, right beside this our bless, right. This, bless yeah. this kitchen. Bless this, bless this kitchen. <laughs> the only thing before love. coffee is Jesus. Am I right? Oh, Can I get an yes, amen? Yes, ma'am. Amen. <laughs> Claps for Jesus. All right. I don't know if that's so, a thing. Claps, claps for, Jesus. for Jesus. It is now. So <laughs> claps for Jesus. So, um, <laughs> Back to my point, hair art had its roots in the 17th and 18th century when infant mortality rates were really high. So it's pretty sad. People's children were dying all the time. So and a a lot of people, like especially poor people, didn't have photographs or anything really to keep from their children except for their hair. Of course, you'd keep some of your deceased child's hair and lovingly make it into something that was a keepsake totally understandable yeah, great way because i feel mm-hmm. like people do start to fade mm-hmm. after a while yeah whether it's someone that you knew in high school or like an ex not saying that like you want to or don't want to remember people but you just forget those yeah. little details i mean i don't know if you'd forget if it's your baby but it, it's it was I mean, a yeah memory works the way it works right and it's a way to remember so like a, touching something or looking at something helps you to remember that person and so hair art was a thing for a while but actual mourning wreaths like these big extravagant thing multi-generational things weren't popular until the victorian era when the quote-unquote cult of the dead was all the rage in britain so uh, queen victoria was obviously like the namesake of the Victorian area. Everyone wanted to be like Queen Victoria. She was the queen. She was that bitch. She was 100% that bitch. 
people just uh, thought she was the coolest. She mourned her husband's death from the time he died in 1861 for the rest of her life. She, so we'll talk about it at the end, but like Victorians had different stages of mourning and she uh, was in full mourning garb in mourning, never took another husband after he died. And so that was a cool thing to do. People were like, we want to be like her. Like we want to be dedicated to the dead and be in mourning. That better be how my future <laughs> husband is. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I was yelling at Tommy yesterday saying, you better not get a girlfriend after I die. <laughs> my God. He's like, why That's are you talking healthy. about this? <laughs> But so this made the act of mourning a very popular thing to do in Britain and the United States. And it went on until the turn of the 20th century. So especially in the United States, the high death toll of the Civil War, like really drove this point home because everyone had people in their lives who were dying. Yeah. Death is just propaganda for the war. Like it's fashionable (laughs) to be mourning. Yeah, I I guess I guess that's true. It just became this huge trend. And but but ironically, it kind of stopped with World War One because people were just so distracted by the war. They kind of stopped making so much art. And then like th- this wasn't the only cause. Yeah. There's, I mean, if they put women to work, then, you know, things are distracting. right. Women well, women <laughs> went to work. Yeah. They didn't spend as much time in the home making craft projects. Another uh, possible cause for this was the de- like the invention of funeral homes before this time death was very intimate and happened in the home the funeral like happened in the home and so people were much more connected with death and then the like invention of funeral homes removed death from your immediate life and so you no longer felt as connected to the corpses enough to maybe take some of their hair and also you could kind of build a wall between you and the dead. Totally. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, that's. Ugh. Yeah. And yeah. S- there's so <laughs> another, another explanation that's like a little lighter is just the change in style. Like during the Victorian era and hair wreaths, people were really into this like busy floral wallpaper with like, sh- like stuff hanging all over the walls and heavy drapes and like women's clothing was like super decorated and drapey and fabric everywhere, which went really well with these like floral ornamental hair wreaths and hair jewelry. But then with the turn of the 20th century, solid paint colors, more plain fashions kind of came into style that looked silly with these really ornamental hair pieces. Mm -hmm. So that was another explanation. Also, uh, the sanitary customs were changing. Dust was started to be viewed as something dirty and unclean and connected to disease. People started washing their clothes more. And so hair accessories and decorations, you couldn't really dust or clean. So it kind of started to seem gross. Yeah. Could you not dust them, like wipe them down? Yeah, it's kind of hard hard because they are very... Mm-hmm. detail and there's so much like little spaces in yeah there for but if to, they're under glass if they're under glass it's probably okay but i think overall like it it, it was like probably body, body stuff i think kind of just started seeming less clean and it like 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 we think it's gross now yeah the perception just changed where it's like that's maybe Gosh. not so cute anymore find out what a germ is and everything <laughs> goes out the window god <laughs> germs just ruin everything <laughs> <laughs> today hair art is sometimes made by artists as political statements because it was a feminine medium of art made in the home by women much like needlepoint today is getting so popular mm-hmm. um it's a way of valuing and uh keeping like feminine art going and into yeah, the, keep it alive yeah, keep keeping doing it alive. what you're doing please definitely and victorian hair art was made almost exclusively of white people's hair so sometimes people these days will make hair art out of black hair as another p- political statement on black experiences beautiful mm-hmm. the yeah every that, i would this is love to too. see that me too. And I unfortunately couldn't find any pictures. So if anyone yeah, I don't knows, think I've ever seen that. I don't think I have either, but I read about it. And so there's uh, this place called Layla's Hair Museum in Independence, Missouri, which is the only official hair wreath museum in the world. But of course, there are other museums like you experienced 
back in Ohio that also have these hair wreaths. Back in Ohio on the farm. <laughs> back in Ohio. <laughs> and um, so this place has 600 hair wreaths and 2,000 pieces of hair jewelry. It's Whoa, really cool. It's a lot of hair. It's a lot of hair. And like we were talking about earlier, you can buy hair wreaths from Etsy or <laughs> eBay. And also, I really want one. So if anyone listening wants to know what to get me for Christmas, um, a hair wreath would be great. <laughs> what if you went to one of those places and you're like, can I... I'd like to buy one. Can we get it flattened out into extensions though? I just really want an eccentric weave type thing going. Yeah. I just buy a hair wreath and then straighten all the hair and have it put onto hair extensions. <laughs> this was much cheaper than the alternative. Yeah. <laughs> this is worth that it. That would be tragic. I just want like a I just want dead people's hair and my ex hair extensions. <laughs> so that's all I have on hair wreaths. But before I end this lesson, I really want to revisit what we talked about earlier about how what Victorians were obsessed with honoring and mourning their dead, because that to me is just really fascinating. And so I just wanted to do a little bit more research. Yeah, I love learning. Please. Victorians. So like death and mourning was in style. And so because of that, this like whole culture and list of rules surrounding death also came into style also like formality was such a part of Victorian culture and trying to seem like you were like better than you were and so you would kind of use a death and rituals around death to elevate your status and those who did not follow these morning rituals could be pegged as immoral or disrespectful of their loved ones so Let's just talk about some of these rituals. So what if there was a woman <laughs> who just started like killing off the people around her so she could show like how bougie and like <laughs> how good a morning she yeah. was? <laughs> I feel like this, that definitely happened. <laughs> I'm well, sure. tell me more. How would they prove it? So people died all the fucking time back then. Like it was the industrial revolution. People were in cities like sanitary conditions were terrible. Death was just a common and open topic. People, people were dead. People, people be dying. And people be dying. And so people might start saving and planning for their children's funerals. You might do that for your own funeral. Death was usually really expensive because uh, deaths were a way to show your social status and like under the guise of honoring the dead. It could strike at any time. You had to save for it. People often planned their own funerals, would pick out their own caskets, would pick out the outfit they'll be buried in. They'd pick out the place of burial, which we still kind of do some of those things now. But it was like it was like planning your wedding back then. Like it was a whole thing. And it was common (laughs) for women even to like make their own funeral shrouds and include that in their dowry. How fucked is that? What if you didn't fit into your funeral shroud? (laughs) What are they going to do? Funeral shroud is just something you like put over the dead body. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought it was like. Okay, I know what a shroud is now, thanks to like one of my past lessons, but okay. <laughs> well, it didn't mind. seem like it. So, <laughs> I was thinking that shroud was just like a dressing that they wore on their body. It could be. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. So Victorians had three periods of mourning. They had deep mourning, full mourning, second mourning, and half mourning. That sounded like four, but deep mourning and full mourning are the same thing. And so... <laughs> I just can't read. So when- it sounds like the phases of the moon. <laughs> Waning morning, waxing morning, night morning, night morning, full morning. It's when you wake up drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so women were expected to be in deep mourning for one year and then spend one year and a half mourning. So two years of mourning all together. A man's mourning period, a shocker, was much shorter because they could get they were supposed to get married again right away. Why though? Misogyny <laughs> and the patriarchy. So Okay. Yeah. So men just weren't held to the same standard. Men didn't have to be sad when their wife died, but wives had to be sad when their husband died. Yeah. There's no replacing a a man. Yeah. Like there is a woman. They're very special. (laughs) So. Yeah. um, (laughs) Yes. Special. They're special. So during deep mourning, a woman could not go into society except to attend church. She was expected to be isolated and in her own home. So the mourning period for a child was usually one year. And for grandparents or siblings, generally it was six months there were rules about what could be worn during morning so men usually had to wear black gloves a dark suit and a black band around their hat there were no specific rules for children but sometimes little girls were expected to wear all white like if a sibling died who made these rules i don't know 
people. It was in Christopher fashion. Columbus. Jesus. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, it was just like the fashion of the time. Like who makes any rule? That's true. Rich people do There are it, no rules. Then, yeah. And then everyone else wants to do it too. So women were expected to be entirely dressed in black from head to toe. They were covered in black crepe. Crepe was like this stiff black fabric that made it really hard to move. It sometimes even caught fire when they were cooking because like they were just supposed <laughs> to be covered in this stiff Highly black fabric. flammable. It was very flammable. Women weren't allowed to wear any jewelry except for black gemstones during the first phase of mourning. But during the second phase, they could wear some jewelry, especially especially hair jewelry of the deceased. Mm. They were also expected to wear a silk weeping veil or a widow's cap. I think I have a picture of that. Um, Yeah. So she's wearing one. It kind of goes over the back of your head and it can also go over the front of your face as well. I don't know if I'm just intoxicated or (laughs) if this picture just makes me feel sad. Well, they are in mourning gear there and they're looking at the picture of the dead guy. They're very sad. So I am empathetic. Yeah. <laughs> they, they do look sad. It does make me feel sad. Yeah. Because I feel like with this whole thing and all these rules, it's something that you're supposed to do and you can't just be what you need to be and feel what you need to feel. Right. You're kind of, you have to kind of go through the motions. And there's a lot of scholarly work on this that I won't really get into, but It's kind of like, in a way, it was a good thing because people were given two years to mourn and no one would tell someone that they're mourning too much, you know, Mm. like you were like society carved out a space for this. But at the same time, there were so many rules and expectations that you couldn't do it in a way that maybe felt natural to you. So it it goes back and forth. Moving on, (laughs) I guess. Photos were extremely expensive, so they were only taken at big life events, especially death. So when photographs were invented, the Victorians loved to use them to take photos of the funeral. Like they'd put together funeral albums, much like you would a wedding album. Wait, so they did not take pictures of the dead people. No, they did. Okay, so they did. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, so haven't you seen... So a lot of times in this era, especially with children, when they would die, it would be unexpected. And so maybe you didn't have a photo of your child and then they died and you're like, oh my God, I need a photo of my child. They would pose the corpses as if they were living and take a family photo. Do you have a picture? No, that's what I should I have feel like I've a seen. Of. I feel like I've seen this, but I, in the moment I didn't know that's what I was seeing. Yeah, that's that's what you were seeing. It's it. I feel like it's pretty well known. Our listeners probably know what we're talking about, but they yeah, post family photos with the corpses of yeah, children were pretty popular off. at the time, and they they were designed to look like they were alive. But of course, you oh can usually God. tell. And I mean, yeah, there are photos all over of this and it's really sad, but at the same time, like they just wanted a picture of their child. Totally. And I don't blame photos were so expensive. This is the only time you'd invest because you don't know if your child is going to die or not. Speaking of dead children, grieving parents might buy something called grieving dolls or grave dolls, which were wax replicas of their children. Wow. That sounds bougie. It is bougie. I don't know if they were always replicas because you could buy them at, like from a Sears catalog, but you could buy one that like matched like the hair and eye color of your child. And sometimes these dolls were buried with their child and sometimes they were kept in like displays in the home, especially like in glass coffins. Is that how we got home? Annabelle? Is that how that happened? I don't think think so I need answers <laughs> maybe you should do a lesson on Annabelle sometime perhaps I will you should so um little girls also had funeral dolls basically these were baby dolls that had like funeral accessories so they'd have like caskets and mourning clothes so they could play funeral with their doll okay um, preparing them for life yeah I'm into that so like like our baby dolls like you might have I don't know stuff you'd use in life with them that you'd play yeah. like you'd bottles, play kitchen or bottles and <laughs> Death was just such a part of life that they had like these accessories for baby dolls. And like Loki, I think that's really awesome. And I kind of would have loved that as a child. Yeah. Talk about things that happen 
in real life right. more. Especially, yeah, if like death is all around you and this is preparing them for the inevitable death of a family member, you'd have your doll to kind of practice with and get you through it. I think that's a kind of a nice idea. People were sometimes buried alive. I didn't do a lot of uh, research on this, but I did take a class on uh, Victorian customs in college. And if I remember correctly, during tuberculosis out- outbreaks, people were buried extremely quickly after death which meant a lot of times they were buried alive just like when their heartbeat was so slow it was undetectable and so like coffins would sometimes be dug up with scratch marks oh, on them. Oh god. Why were they digging up coffins though? Um maybe grave robbers stuff like that mm, but Okay. This did not happen very often, but it was enough to create some intense paranoia. <laughs> That's like in the office again when Dwight Shue <laughs> was talking about burying his family members and he's like, we yeah. shoot them once to just really make sure they're right. dead. Because this, there have been times, <laughs> not often, but there have been times where people have been buried alive. So this yeah. led to- Just a, once is enough. <laughs> yeah. So this led to a market for safety coffins. I'm sure you're familiar with this. Sometimes like a string with a bell would be tied to a deceased person. So like it would ring if they were alive. That's where this term saved by the bell comes from. One other guy had an even more elaborate idea and he built this thing where it was basically a glass window shaft that was buried with the person and like went above ground. So you could look through a window in the ground and Ew. see Ew. the corpse's face. Ew. Yeah. And fun fact, the person who invented this died on Halloween. <gasps> nice. Yeah. <laughs> died in the coffin or above ground? Above ground, thankfully. <laughs> Another thing, professional mourners were sometimes hired to attend funerals. So like I said, like funerals were a status symbol. Like it was showing oh how much God. all these people cared about you. So you'd maybe hire mourners to make it look like there were more sad people than there actually were. That's just doing too much. <laughs> like you have a death to deal with already. The definition of Victorians was doing too much. <laughs> like after everything I just read, you're going to tell me this is too much. That's why I draw the line. They were the most extra of an extra. <laughs> but also it was inappropriate to publicly cry at the time. What? Yeah, so so breaking the law, breaking the law. <laughs> so these um, professional mourners did take some um, pressure off the family because uh, they they did the crying for you, and you had that at the funeral without you having to like embarrass yourself and do it. And there then, was a guy on Facebook who went viral, being I guess for this time a professional mourner. It was like different levels of his emotions <laughs> to come, like to for him to be paid to come to funerals. So yeah, there you go. Same thing. <laughs> same, same thing. Same different. <laughs> he could have like done really well for himself back in the day. <laughs> so I just want to end on a list of superstitions around mourning in the yes, Victorian era. Yes, I'm not superstitious, but I'm a little stitious. <laughs> <laughs> the Victorians were a little, they were a lot stitious. Bodies were carried out of the door feet first so that they could not look back and call someone to follow them, which is Ew. the creepiest. Curtains were closed and mirrors were covered until after the funeral so that the dead person's image wouldn't get stuck in the glass. That's fair. I can get with that. Yeah. Gross. I don't want any chance. Also, we're doing a Ouija board tomorrow, so. Yeah, we are. (laughs) (laughs) And we're going to put mirrors all around us. I don't not want it (laughs) enough not to do it. Oh, I want it. So um, (laughs) if you saw yourself in the mirror at someone's house who had recently died, the the thought was that you'd be next, kind of like catching the bouquet, but bad. (laughs) And uh, clocks were stopped at the time of death to prevent bad luck. Family photographs were turned down to prevent the people in them from being possessed by the dead. And this was my favorite one. A black ribbon would sometimes be tied around the necks of dogs or even chickens um, so that they could participate in mourning. Oh my God. That is very cute. I'm just picturing a chicken clucking around with a little (laughs) black bow tie. I feel like I've seen that and never really knew why. you have. Yeah. Cause the idea was that like you, you wanted to appease the dead. So you'd want like everyone to be mourning them so that death didn't spread. Like they wouldn't be angry. (laughs) Um, Imagine your mom going through mourning for like your dad. And she's like, get the chicken. Get the chicken. We gotta get the bow tie on the chicken. Cover the mirror. <laughs> um, but yeah, so <laughs> Victorians were really f- 
fixated on death. They were the OG goths and all these things, including hair wreaths, seem creepy to us now. But when people were constantly dying all the fucking time, this was a way to cope. And I think uh, hair wreaths are actually a really cool way to memorialize loved ones. And you guys better fucking cherish those locks of hair I gave you. And if I die... You better cherish it or I'm coming back to I'm going to shave your you. fucking head when you die. I'm taking all your Do hair. it. I don't care. I'll be dead. <laughs> Take all of it. Make it into a wreath. So quickly, my sources are SoutCountyHistory.com, Artsy.net, a article called The Curious Victorian Tradition of Making Art from Human Hair by Allison Meyer, a graveinterest.blogspot.com, National Geographic article called Trendy Victorian Jewelry Was Made from Hair by Becky Little, Order of the Good Death.com, Psychology Today, FuneralBasics.com, and Ranker.com. And that's my lesson, bitches. Let's hear a quick word from our sponsor, which is ourselves. Okay, so not to indulge capitalism too too much, um, but I I I like buying things. It's but it's I true. Love buying things. <laughs> right before we were about to start recording this episode today, I was like, wait, I need to buy this jacket from Amazon. <laughs> and then I went on and told uh, Haley everything I bought from Amazon. And then it's just a circle of buying things. But like, maybe you shouldn't buy stuff from Amazon. Maybe you should buy stuff from independent uh, female podcast, female podcast. Fempod. Fempod. <laughs> we are selling stuff, if you haven't guessed. <laughs> right. Yes. If you haven't guessed, then we'll tell you real quick. We have these t-shirts. I mean, also stickers too, but we're, I'm really excited about these t-shirts mm-hmm. because it's like our podcast coming to real true life. It's like our personalities put into a t-shirt. Into a t-shirt that you can wear. It's a night class t-shirt. <laughs> and it says... Uh, one of our favorite moments from Hose the show. Pose for science. Pose for science. That's what it says. Yes. Deal with it. Wear it. Love it. Yeah. Fuck Read anyone it. who doesn't like it. <laughs> I mean, you, you, can, you can not like it, but if anyone tells you they don't like it while you're wearing it, that's a problem. Yeah. Then they're just yeah. an a-hole. They can keep that in their brain, but in our brain... We love it. We love it. And we think you need one too. They have an alcohol molecule on them. They're soft pink and yeah, they say very, for science. Very scientific, very smart, yes. well thought out, super funny, mm-hmm. clear on where you stand about science. <laughs> <laughs> no one will ask you your stance on science when you're wearing one of these shirts. So if you consider yourself a hoe for science and maybe you like night classy just a little bit you can click on the link in the show notes you can click on the link on any of our social medias or you can go to parasar.co and buy your shirt Haley, will you spell parasar for us i sure will will <laughs> Woo, okay <that's- laughs> Woo! <laughs> that is not the spelling <laughs> to be clear here's our spelling that's p-a-r-a-s-a-u-r dot co it's a lot of a's it is it's all the a's because when you're ho for science you get all a's so (laughs) go get your t-shirt now get it bye Bye. (laughs) so we're rolling can i say welcome back we've got it going we've got it rolling we're doing things and you're listening so listen here (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's Miss Madden's class, and also I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry uh, about nothing. I take it all back. Good. All right. So, Kat, a couple of episodes ago, and also this episode, you mentioned post-it notes multiple times, and you talked about how your laptop is like pretty much constantly covered with them with reminders. Yeah. It's like I don't think I could live without post-it notes. Like. Today, there's only one post-it note on my laptop, but usually there's a stack of like 50 and they're usually covered in my students' names, like who I have, whose parent I have to call and whose yeah. grade I have to put in. It's just an endless list of things to remember, things to do, mm-hmm. parents to call, yeah. district learning days to sign up oh for, Lord. cadre two sixteen five ninety seven. If you don't know, cadre is what teachers, at least in our district, have to do. It's like professional learning. I don't have to learn. I already learned. (laughs) I learned through podcasts, which are much more effective than anything. Much more interesting, at least. (laughs) For me, interesting is 
equivalent to effective because if I'm interested, then I'm going to be effective in applying oh, yeah. it. Those canvas cadres where you just have to like, it says it's supposed you, to take three hours and that takes 20 minutes because you just skip right click, click, through. Click, 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 right okay. through. <laughs> Alex is telling us to hurry up. <laughs> yeah, his like blinking hands are like, shut the fuck up and move it on. Yeah, he needs right. puppets that are like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> can talk through his puppets. He just yeah. wants to put, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my friends. Today's lesson is a Patreon pick. Woo-hoo! Yes. So uh, one of our lovely Patreons donated to the level that they were able to get on the level that they can pick a topic. God bless them. <laughs> Faith Brown picked a topic. Hey. She is from Concordia, Missouri. I think that's how you say it. But she also Missouri. Attends- Missouri. That's how you say it. She attends college in Seward, Nebraska. I don't know if that's how you say it, but yeah, Seward, Nebraska. So she's got, you know, she's like dipping her toes in two waters here. But she wanted to hear a lesson on one of her favorite hobbies, which is bullet journaling. God bless her. I am not that organized. (laughs) I know. I know. And we'll get into thinking about a bullet journal raises my blood pressure. (laughs) I have seen lots of things. I've never really done bullet journaling until now, which we'll get to. Hmm. But bullet journaling, I didn't really know what it was. Like if I had to describe it, I think it's for people who are extra but want to be chill. But it's all <laughs> Wow, you're insulting our Patreon. No, 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 but it's also for people who are chill but want to be extra, like type A. Mm. Like I have found that it's truly for everyone there's a lot of wiggle room to make it what you want it to be for yourself there's a lot of freedom in it so let's start with the history behind it all so it's really just a method but it was created by a name um, a name man <laughs> <laughs> also wine um it was created by a man named writer carol he was in college his but- name was writer yeah, R Y D R. Oh, Ryder. Yeah, but it sounds Ryder. like Ryder, not Ryder. <laughs> I was like, he was destined for this. <laughs> yeah, see, it was written by a named man, journal journaler Bulletson. <laughs> <laughs> Bullety McJournaly. <laughs> Bull Bulletini Journalami. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, <laughs> we've had too much wine. <laughs> Is there oh, too much? <laughs> when you reach the 10th octave, that's when it's too much. And I think that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're stuck in that voice. So you have to, you can't go below it. Okay. So, <laughs> Journalini Bodolami, aka Ryder Carroll, <laughs> he was diagnosed with ADD as a child. And that really affected What if his- I just died laughing? <laughs> Yeah, it's not do funny. You, do you need a moment? We Alec, can laugh. Alec, Alec has ADD. Alec, are you offended? No. Okay. Keep well, you should be. Life with people devaluing that illness. So. <laughs> you should be because you did You're not. You're just bad at school. You don't have ADD. <laughs> you didn't invent this. That's, that's satire, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> BT dubs. That's site Sci-ti- satire. Ooh. Okay. I'm okay. sorry. Again. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> But yeah, Alec has ADD, writer, journalani, Carol has ADD. He's had it for a really long time. Fast forward to college. (laughs) And he's like, I need to do something that can actually help me learn and, and like interact with the material that I'm trying to put into my brain. And I don't know. I'm not sure if I have ADD or not, which is actually funny because like, Alec, you have it. But last night I was telling Tommy, I was finishing up my research and I learned that the person who created bullet journaling had ADD. And then I was like reading about his symptoms and I was like, Oh, maybe I have ADD. And then I was like, I should like, I said, I should research ADD. And I started researching ADD (laughs) and I was like, is adult ADD when you just find yourself researching ADD, but you're supposed to be doing something else completely. Is that how you get diagnosed? I mean, maybe you could go to the doctor. I don't, 
It's possible. It's possible. I'll get back to you on that. But okay. anyway, <laughs> this guy definitely had ADD. It really affected his ability to learn. So he ended up developing what we now know as bullet journaling in college. And it was just something that he had for himself. And I'll get into exactly what it is in a minute here. But a friend saw what he was doing and he was like, you should share this with other people. And he did it. Like he did what so many of us struggled to do. And he took someone else's advice. <laughs> and I would never, I know <laughs> that would be my downfall. Like I could have all the opportunities yeah. to become a, a billionaire. <laughs> Not that I would want to be a billionaire. I would. I'd want to be a billionaire and then I donate it so that it was only Ooh. a millionaire. I want to be a million, a million, a million, a million <laughs> And live in Cape Cod or what was it? I'm just kidding. I know it wasn't Cape Cod. Uh, was I mean, it was somewhere in the Holiday House, wasn't it? The Holiday House. I know it was the Holiday House, but I don't know. Oh, I thought was. you forgot. It was I like think it was in Connecticut. Connecticut. Yeah, that's probably it. I'm yeah. sorry to all the Swifties out there. We mean no offense. Yeah. We are just still. We've been drinking. We've been drinking. And this alcohol. was reference to episode. I don't think we have to. I think I think episode the true 22. fans know. Episode 22. Alec told us the episode number, but true fans know. True fans know. But if you're not a true fan and you're just now joining us. If you're listening backwards, it's okay. We still love you. There's a difference between a true fan and a new fan. So if you're a new oh, fan. no. <laughs> we, we are thankful for our new fans. No, she's saying there's a difference between a true fan and a new fan. Yeah, like a true fan knows what we're referencing, but a new fan is picking up like, oh, I just heard about this on Instagram, yeah. Twitter, TikTok. The new fan will become a true fan. Exactly. Mm. If you're in Metamorphosis, <laughs> then go back to episode 22, was it? Yeah, yeah, 22. I think it's called The Millionaire, so it shouldn't be too hard to figure out. And you'll get it. Yeah. <laughs> I've always wanted to be a part of an inside joke. <laughs> Maybe you have two. Um, so now here's your chance. Go that back was the to second office. Reference. Reference. That was the third, third office well. reference. Yeah. We're, we're, the, we're the office now. <laughs> we're actually the office gals podcast or the office ladies podcast. Night um, office. Yeah. <laughs> night office. Third shift. I hope I hope you are where you where you think you are. <laughs> if not, then destiny. <laughs> Anyway, long story short, this guy, uh, writer only, journal only, give me the formula. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a, a, I had like a targeted ad on Instagram today, with, and it was a sweatshirt that said that. <laughs> really? <laughs> Ravioli, ravioli, give me the formula. And it was a black sweatshirt and it said it on it in cursive. And I was like, I need that. Bro, I think I need it too. Yeah. Oh boy, here we go. Maybe we should make some some content, some night classy content that's rider only, rider only, give me the journal. <laughs> I, think I, need I think I need it okay. after this experience. Okay, maybe. Let us know if you want it. Maybe we'll make it. <laughs> anyway. This guy, Carol, he put out his idea and this method that he had been using that helped him learn things and retain information when he was in college called now bullet journaling. He put it online in 2013. It did really well. It ended up earning $80,000 on Kickstarter funds. He gained tons of fans in 2018. And, and by 2018, bullet journaling was in over 3 million posts on Instagram. Another little fun fact is as of 2018, there was an 18% increase in the sale of notebooks in the US Dang. compared to the year before. And there was also an increase ranging from 5 to 17% in the sales of various types of pens. So if you don't know yet, bullet journaling uses no <laughs> pens. What didn't know what a bullet <laughs> journal was? And they're just like, so confused. The hell I, do I, I don't care? know what it is. Really? Oh, perfect. Okay, oh. cool. Oh. Well, if you don't know, then I'm about to uh, clue you in. So basically the name is descriptive, but misleading. It's not about ammunition. <laughs> basically everything in a journal that you do bur bullet bur <laughs> that you do bullet journaling in is written in bullet points. It's evolved into different styles just as things do. But 
the basis of it all is that it's a, just a really quick way to put down thoughts, things you need to do and events. And I'll get into more detail about that in a minute. But like I said before, it's really customizable. You can make it minimalistic. You can make it artistic. You can make it super organized. You can put in pictures and it's not just like a journal. It's not a calendar. I describe it as the liger of note taking. It's like the love child of a journal, a calendar and a planner. They all got together and they made (laughs) bullet journaling. (laughs) And it's just for people who don't journal and they want to, or who do journal and they want something more. When, when I think about bullet journaling, I think like, okay, I, it's hard for me to just sit down and write, but if there's an artistic element, like making uh, my writing like look beautiful and in different colors, it's kind of, yeah, like you said, like it's like a liger. It's a mix of like art and drawing and writing. Exactly. Yeah. It's your perfect mix. You mm-hmm. can really make it your own because there are basic rules to it to make it a bullet journal. But after that, It's really open to interpretation, which I love so much. One of the basic points that the guy who created bullet journaling makes is that there are major benefits to taking notes by hand over taking hand, taking hand, gosh, (laughs) Um, it's better to take notes by hand than it is to take notes with your laptop. So not only does it, it take you longer to do it by hand, but it's good because it forces your brain to remember more. It's faster to do it with a laptop because you can type more, but it also makes it easier to type things verbatim. There are lots of studies done on this. And when you write things by hand, you're forced to pick and choose the things that you want to put down. Oh, yeah. I force my students to take notes by hand. Good job. Yeah. That's a good teacher right there. Yeah, Every day I like have a reminder to like put a heading on your paper and I make them show me their pencils and stuff because we need to do it by hand. Yeah. And so you are saying all of these things to them throughout Mm -hmm. the extent of a class period Mm -hmm. and they can't just type things or record what you're saying because that's quite passive in comparison to taking notes by hand, you have to pick what you want to write down and then you have to process that. And then you have to put it into what you want to write down. So it's like you're learning it on multiple different levels and you're processing it multiple times. So you learn more and you learn it better compared to people who are taking notes by writing on their laptop every single time. Like when they compared people who have handwritten notes versus those on the laptop, people who did it handwritten, did it better on the test almost every single time. So that's where they really believe in bullet journaling is great. It can also be done virtually. Some uh, good things about that are that you don't need supplies and it's more easy to share. But personally, I really believe in the handwritten bullet journaling too. Even in college, I never took a laptop to class unless like I had to. I took handwritten notes in college. I did a mixture of the two and I'm glad now that I have my online notes because Mm. I am able to reference my like early childhood and it's much easier to do that. Yeah. But I think I did learn the things more like in phys in physiobiology. Yeah. I took my notes by hand. No, thank you. (laughs) It's like, oh, we're talking about the brain. Let me just (laughs) get my pencil here. Yeah. Well, I feel like with science and math, you got to do it by hand because there's so many diagrams and like math stuff like that. That just has to be by hand. Exactly. But the good thing about bullet journaling is that it's not just like things that you're learning. It's I would really use it just in your life. Mm -hmm. It's really good for life things like all the things that you and I write on post-it notes and try to remember all the time. And I have taken so many times off a notepad that I have at school, put it in my purse. I'm like, okay, I need to look at this when I get home and then I will do the things that it tells me to do. Zero times have I done that over the school year. And I've put (laughs) it in my purse like so many times. Yeah. 
So I actually have my own homemade mm. bullet journal here. Let me grab it from Did my Did you make purse. it for this episode or do you bullet journal? I made it from this, but this is going to start a little experiment okay. of me bullet journaling. So wow, I'll Faith get back really to changed you. your personal life. She did because I think this is something that I found was maybe missing a little bit because I do like to journal. I like to write down things about my day, but I also like I have so many notes in my phone and I have post-it notes. It just seems really spread out. And I suspect that I might have at least a little touch of ADD that makes it hard for me to follow Mm -hmm. through on all the things that I'd like to do. And it's okay if you don't follow through on all the things, but I want to set myself up the best that I possibly can Mm -hmm. to do all the things. So there are custom-made notebooks for journaling to do a bullet journal, but you can really use any journal. At one conference, a guy said that you can use anything, but like you can just start with a plain journal. So I just made this journal. I have a um, scrapbook from my oh, classroom that got messed up. Yeah. I made Haley's bullet journal. It wow, says on the front. So good. <laughs> it can be done several ways. So when you open I'm it up. I'm impressed already. <laughs> Mine would not look like that. Mine would have hair glued on. <laughs> just kidding. My, but it would you know look what? terrible. I need to glue some hair on right now. Where's, <laughs> where's my cat hair? Okay. <laughs> So you glue in your most favorite person's hair first and (laughs) foremost, and then you create an index. So Mm. an index is something that is going to help you find what you need specifically. And you, I would give yourself two to four pages for this, depending on how big your, your notebook is. But this one is just a couple pages long that I have here. So you're going to put a page number on every single page that you have. And that's what you'll reference back in your index. So Mm -hmm. that's what you start with is your index. And then there are so many different ways to do this. I just followed the most basic version that they have on the bullet journaling website. I did look at other websites as well, but the second thing it tells you to do after doing your index is to create a spread. Basically a spread is when two pages are open. The first thing you create is a six month spread. So since it's about to be November, I did November, December, January, February, March, and April. And then you just write down all the important dates. Mm -hmm. So for November, I have election day. I have when my friend is visiting. I have Thanksgiving break. I have your birthday, Kat. (laughs) Wait, for what? For January. Oh, I thought you were saying November still. And I was like, gonna no, punch your head through the wall. (laughs) (laughs) This is a very general spread. I know when your birthday is, everything is fine. My birthday better be lit. It's going to be coronavirus It's going to be on fire, actually. <laughs> oh. We're having a bonfire. I just decided I it would right now. I love that. Okay, Let's we'll do, do it that. then. Alec, write that down. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a spread of, and all you have to do is just open up the page, split it down the middle, and then make it into three sections on either page, and it creates six boxes. If you want to do the 12 months, then then do that. If you only want to focus on the next three months, then do that. And that's exactly what I'm talking about, that it's extremely customizable, but it just has this very basic structure. So we've done the index, we've done our six month spread. So then you go onto the monthly log, you write the month at the top. And then on the left side of the page, you're going to write down all of the numeric dates. So November has 30 days in it from top to bottom. I've written the numbers one through 30 next to it. You write the day of the week so that you can easily reference what day of the week it is on which date you write down your major events going on. (laughs) She only has night classy recordings (laughs) written down. (laughs) So true. Yeah. So for my whole month of November, all the things, the major things that are going on are night classy events, which is just Friday recordings. Yeah. It's a very reliable pattern in my life right now, but I'll add things later on. And then as you can, I'm sure you can tell we're focusing in And in and in. We're getting closer and closer until we get to the specific day. So today I did a bullet journal entry. And this is, 
they call it rapid logging, which sounds extremely intimidating, but it's where you write down everything on your mind. And you can see here, I wrote 30 F it's the 30th of October F for Friday is when we're recording. And then everything I have here is written in bullet points. So I have night classy recording, complete my notes, order pizza, question mark. Um, Alec completed that for me. So thanks for that. <laughs> um, I need to compile my learning kit items, which is something for my students. And I, I need to do something new for this weekend for my mental health. I need to do something out of the ordinary. So we can decorate for Christmas together on Sunday. Okay. Is that yes, enough please. out of the ordinary? Yes. Okay. That sounds fantastic. And I want to do a trip to TJ Maxx to see if they have Christmas stuff out yet. I'm going to do a trip to TJ Maxx, the dollar store. Mm-hmm. Um, I've already started. I know exactly what I want to do. Okay, great. Okay, <laughs> sweet. So that's my thing. Great. <laughs> great. <laughs> I'm also creating a vision board. I'm going to get chalkboard paint if you all want to join and paint something. I have a whiteboard that I'm going to paint over. Nice. Um, if if you, if we can I also could be do down. My, my vision board is a Google doc, but I could, um, I need something in front of it. me. Okay. I think <laughs> we should do that. Okay. Yeah. So we'll do that. I'll add that to the list. So if, I don't know if you can tell, but each of these bullet points has a different symbol mm-hmm. for the bullet and that's all a part of the bullet journaling. So there's a key to what you're doing. So one basic bullet point is task things that you need to do. A dash is a note. So just maybe a thought or an extra added detail. And then when it's just a blank, like circle, nothing in the middle, it's events. So you have three basic things here that you're writing down when you're just letting your mind out and putting it on paper. You have tasks, notes, and events. And that's what gets you day-to-day things. Now, You can also look back on the month and see how things went. And that's where you can do some self-reflection. You can see was the task incomplete or complete? Should I move this event forward and put it into next month? Or should I just cancel it completely? Is it irrelevant? (laughs) (laughs) Which... Some events are just <laughs> irrelevant. <laughs> all night class, you're just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, all night classy just is set on repeat. Everything else is, is irrelevant. irrelevant. <laughs> exactly. So that's where you have the basic things. I think that's what probably most bullet journalers do. And I really like the part where they say that like at the end of each month, you make a calendar for the next month and you do that reflection. You look and see over the course of this last month, what have I done? What have I not done? And what do I need to do? They describe it as a map of the past, the future, and the present. And so there are lots of different things you can do with this too. You can do things like I made a November habit tracker. So you can fill in when you do each of these habits across the top. I have a day. I have the number in for each date. I only got to 25 though. So I guess I'm quitting out like after Thanksgiving time for the rest of <laughs> November, but it's written across horizontally here. And then and vertically, I have, have I taken my pills? Have I put the gel on my face? Did I do my yoga? Have I read and have I journaled? And then you can see over the scope of a month what you've done, what you haven't done. And it just, I don't know, seems like it really helps people. Yeah. Lots of people fucking love this. I'm sure it's like a good, uh, cause it's easy to live your life day by day, which as an Enneagram seven, that's what I do. I don't, <laughs> I don't think ahead and I don't reflect like this. I like to live in the moment, but this is a good thing to, if you're one of those people like me, to force yourself to have a visual of, okay, this is what you did and what you didn't do. Yeah. Look at it in the eyes. (laughs) Reflect. (laughs) And I don't think that it necessarily needs to feel any type of way. Like for you, I would not recommend doing a habit tracker unless that's something that you really want to focus on. Like it's not, it's not necessarily a negative thing, like beating yourself up, but it's, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's it easy clearly, for an, impulsi- an impulsive person like me to not do what they're supposed to do. Right. And it this clearly, is a good way to be accountable. Clearly depicts what you're doing. It does help hold you accountable. If you let it hold you accountable, you have to journal mm-hmm. to make it accountable for yourself. There are lots 
and lots of different things that you can do with this. You can make grocery list with this. You can make recipe like trackers with this. You can make a mood tracker by the year. Like each mood gets a different color and you mm. like do a dot. Like, Ooh, I like that. I know. I like that too. <laughs> it like makes me really excited. So yeah. I, I'll have to check back in in a couple of weeks. You can make gratitude logs and it for me is really just a catch all. So I'm just about done with my journal that I try, try it in every night, but it's more like every two weeks. Um, <laughs> that's my own thing. Um, <laughs> but it's really like a catch all. It's not for people who journal. It's not for people who don't journal. It's for people who just want I don't know. There's no one way to describe it. I I tried to describe it just now, but it's really hard to describe. But it seems like something that if you do it, then it will work for you. And if it's not working for you, then you can make it work for you. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have something in your life that's down on paper, then I highly recommend bullet journaling and I'm going to try it myself. I definitely wish I would have been planned enough to try it like a week leading up to this lesson. It never works like that. Yeah. You can hope it does, but that's just not the way a lot of stuff. It worked out. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like organized chaos. You get to just dump your brain out. A ton of people like it and stand by it. And I'm really excited to try it for these next couple of weeks. And if it sticks, then awesome. If it doesn't, then um, then I tried it. But a lot of people really like it. And so I'm going to try the fad. I hope you do too. If you would like more information, the sources I have today are from bulletjournal.com, NPR, Blossoms and bulletjournals.wordpress.com, Wikipedia, and BuzzFeed. All right. Thank you, Haley. That was a great lesson. And thank you so much, Faith. That was such a good topic suggestion. If you want your own topic, you can head to patreon.com slash nightclassy. Click the link in any of our social media bios. Click the link in the show notes. And or there are other ways to support us. If not monetarily, you can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts. Suggest us to a friend. Review leave, us. Leave a kindly review. And kind reviews only. Kind we reviews. We got our one bad yeah. star. Wouldn't it be great if we we're the only podcast with like 10,000 five-star reviews and nothing else? But that would be great, but also unrealistic. Unrealistic, but <laughs> let's try to make it's already it. Let's aim there. Like, let's, aim, let's shoot for the stars. Leave us a great review. And thank you so much for so, listening. So, so, much. We're so, awesome. We, we love so you. Thank you. And ready? Yep. Three. Two, one, class, class dismissed. dismissed.